hardware uh, and, and who are some of the other players, they're somewhat surprising, actually. Uh, sure, there's the, there are the AMDs of the world, and, and of course, uh, Taiwan Semi is, is going to accommodate all of these players. Um, but there are other companies, and Tesla is a good example. It has designed its own AI chip. So has Meta Platforms, so has Google. Uh, and, and, and Tesla pulled its NVIDIA chip out of uh, its cars and uh, put in its own, which is more of a, a special purpose AI chip as opposed to a more generalized uh, AI chip. Um, so, so that's on the hardware side. And then on the software side, what's fascinating today is, you know, to see hardware like NVIDIA get a multiple like 25 or 26 times revenues. That's not times earnings. That's times revenues. Uh, whereas most of these, uh, many of the software companies uh, in which uh, we have, or to which we have exposure, uh, they are priced in the, well, Twilio itself is two times revenues uh, and others, and that's an unusual one, that's, a, that's, that's quite an unusual one. Others, though, are in the single digits as a multiple of revenues. Uh, so it sort of flipped the world on its head. Most, uh, most investors have gotten used to hardware being uh, lower multiple and software being higher multiple. So it's a very interesting time. Uh, and as far as the ramifications broadly, I think we are going to be shocked at the productivity gains uh, that uh, artificial intelligence will unleash. And I think that we're at a moment in time from an economic point of view uh, where uh, companies are going to really want AI. They're going to be looking for ways to cut costs. Why? Because we think they're losing pricing power. Uh, COVID was a very special time, or post-COVID during the supply chain uh, problems, very special time from a pricing point of view. Uh, these, this was a major supply shock to the global economic system. And, uh, and so pricing power, you know, demand increased relative to supply, pricing power these companies had. Uh, they're losing it now. And uh, we believe the economy, and we'll go into this in a moment, is closer to a hard landing. And it is during periods of turmoil and recession that companies and consumers are willing to change the way they're doing things. And we think we're moving into that kind of moment. Now, many of you know we think there's going to be a harder landing out there in the economy than most, uh, most people expect. And, um, and we're beginning to see uh, that the, the stock market is actually appreciating. Now, doesn't that seem inconsistent? No, no. Uh, for the past two years, when it relates to innovation and for, and, and for all of 22, for the broader market, we went into a bear market. And in some parts of the market, an extreme bear market, the likes of which we have never seen before. Uh, innovation stocks were hurt more uh, in this go around than they were in the tech and telecom bust when we weren't ready for prime time uh, in terms of the, these new technologies. The cloud didn't come about until 06. Uh, AI, the first big, big breakthrough, deep learning, not until 2012. And then uh, the transformer architecture and artificial intelligence, 2018. Uh, the tech and telecom bubble happened because too much capital chased too few opportunities too soon. The technologies weren't ready and the costs were prohibitive. Well, now the costs are, are coming down to uh, uh, an extreme degree. And, and AI is a great example of this. And the technologies are ready just in terms of costs. Um, Chat GPT. Uh, if that model had been developed in 2015, it would have cost $800 million to develop. It was developed in 2020, and it cost 
roughly $5 million. Think about that. What a rapid cost decline that was. And uh, if it were to be developed today, it would be uh, less than $500,000. And by the year 2030, that model would cost $30. So AI training costs are dropping at a, a rate of 70% per year. We've never seen anything like this. This is twice as fast, maybe more than twice as fast as Moore's Law. Um, and uh, we think the explosive growth opportunities will happen very quickly as well. I think NVIDIA going from minus 13% reven percent revenue growth uh, in its late latest quarter, the April quarter, and guiding to a 63% increase in revenue in the next quarter gives you a sense of how quickly companies uh, and consumers are scrambling to take advantage of this new technology. Uh, so the conclusion here is we do think we're going into a hard landing, uh, or let's just say a harder landing than most expect. We do think a lot of that is discounted but it will be uncomfortable enough for companies who are losing pricing power and, um, and experiencing margin pressure. It is going to force them to adopt these new technologies faster than otherwise would be the case. Innovation solves problems. It always does. And uh, we believe companies are going to be looking at a major pro problem, and that is margin degradation uh, that they will want to protect against. Um, and uh, an example of the market having discounted a, a good deal of this bad news is uh, in the last 10 days, Home Depot. Home Depot uh, guided down its same store sales for the entire year down to something like minus zero, uh, minus 5% uh, in a range. And uh, when you think about it, Home Depot um, should be benefiting. It benefited a lot during COVID, of course, but uh, a lot of people are not moving from their homes because their mortgage rates are so low. And today's mortgage rates are so high in comparison that they, they can't afford to, to, to move. And so they, they are continuing to renovate and, and fix up their homes. And yet Home Depot is saying its sales are going to fall this year. And what does that mean? That's both price and, and units uh, at work here. Uh, and yet, when it announced that, uh, when it revised down that number, uh, the stock really didn't go down that much. Uh, and that's because we went through a bear market last year, uh, and the market in its wisdom saw the future. Now, what is the market looking at? Well, we believe that the market is beginning to uh, discern that interest rates and inflation are going to come down much more than anyone now expects. Uh, and uh, it, while the market has been very narrowly focused to mega tech, tech companies, you can look at that in one of two ways. Uh, the negative way is, wait a minute, this, this market is way too narrow. Uh, it is rewarding just a few stocks. And that's usually uh, a bad sign. Um, it is sometimes, uh, it certainly was in uh, the late 60s, early 70s with the Nifty 50 and in the tech and telecom bubble, which, uh, which basically rewarded only technology companies. Um, but many other times, it's actually the opposite. It is this narrowing um, gives way to a broadening out, especially if the economic backdrop improves. Uh, and when we say economic backdrop, in, in this case, uh, inflation and interest rates. And we've been saying for quite some time, we think that the bigger risk going forward uh, out there is not inflation, it's deflation. 
And we believe that the, the fixed income markets began to recognize that last October. Mid-October, uh, interest rates, the 10-year Treasury bond yield in the United States peaked at 4.3%. Uh, and, and it is still lower than that at about 3.7% today. So uh, that's the punchline. 